Once a file system has been constructed on a disk, it's necessary to attach that file system to Linux so you have access to it. This process is known as mounting the file system. It doesn't matter whether it's a hard drive, a floppy, a CD-ROM, a zip drive, or whatever, the process is the same. You can mount the drive anywhere. All you have to do is create a directory and use it as the mount point. Let me show you what I mean with a floppy. The first thing to do is create a file system on the floppy disk. The next step is to create a directory to be used as the mount point. This is done with the mkdir or make directory command. The name of the command is sort of an acronym for make directory. The name of the directory doesn't matter, but it will be the name that's used to address the contents of the disk. Using both the L and D options on LS, we can see the permissions granted to the new directory. The D option is necessary to get LS to list the information about the directory itself. Without this option, LS would try to list the contents of the directory. And as you can see, the directory is empty. The mount command is used to attach the floppy disk to the directory. That's done by specifying the device node and the directory name this way. Now when we look at the files in this directory, we can see that it is indeed a mounted file system because it has the lost and found directory. It's just as if the floppy disk were a directory on the hard drive. Let me change directories to the floppy and create a file on it. I created the file using VI, the visual editor. There's more about the VI editor in an upcoming lesson. The directory named dot dot is the parent directory of the current directory, so to go back to the parent directory of the floppy, it's only necessary to change to the dot dot directory like this. Now let's look at the contents of the floppy. The new file is there. Now the floppy can be unmounted this way. Notice the spelling of this command. When people talk about it, they usually call it unmount, but it's spelled umount. Exactly why it's spelled this way is a mystery deep in the mists of the history of Unix. Anyway, the floppy disk has been unmounted and is no longer associated with the directory. Now it's just a normal directory, and it's empty. Look here. It's sort of a Unix tradition to mount things such as floppies and CDs in the MNT directory. These directories are all used as mount points. The names Alice, Cygnus, and Retro are local computers and I mount their file systems here so I can copy stuff back and forth without any hassle. I also have the floppy and CD-ROM mount points here just to make things easy so I can remember where they are. Let's mount this floppy drive here. You can see that the floppy is mounted because it contains the file that was created on it when it was mounted in the other location. Actually, things are a bit easier than this because of some configuration settings. Let me show you. First, let me unmount the floppy this way. Now I can mount the floppy by just using the directory name like this. I can do that 
because I've already defined associations between the directories and the device nodes in a file systems table. And that's the subject of the next lesson.